talk is RIP Nagoyes, Hello Docker Shinken by Rohit Gupta. So Rohit is a developer, force enthusiast, and an Indian nationalist. He's passionate about technology and has worked on the area of convergence of telephony over the web. So Hello, everyone. You can hear me? You can hear me? Yeah. Hello, everyone. First of all, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's a real honor to be presenting in front of such an awesome audience. Uh, so uh, the topic which I'm going to talk about is resting peace, Nagios. Hello, Dr. Shinken. First of all, who am I? Uh, I'm a developer working in the area of DevOps. I've been involved in a lot of automation over AWS, working some bit on Docker as well. Uh, in terms of monitoring, I've been working in the area of monitoring for more than three years now. I'll be sharing some of my, some of my experiences with monitoring systems and uh, why Shinken makes more sense than Nagios and what Docker Shinken has to offer. But before I begin, let me ask you a quick question. How many of you over here have never used any monitoring system. Please raise your hands. All right, great, awesome. A lot of you. Uh, how many of you have used Nagios? Hey, great. So I have one good news for both of you. Let's see. So for the, uh, for the ones who have never tried any monitoring systems, there's a, there's a Maybe a terrible news, but it's a news. Monitoring systems are hard. It's a Shinken manual, basically, uh, documentation. In the documentation itself, it says, relax, it takes time. Why? Because monitoring system, it's monitoring itself is a different domain. domain. You have a lot of new concepts, and you have to, if you want to have a proper monitoring setup ready, you have to take care of a lot of things. You may get started with a few monitoring systems, but it may not be useful. Like you may get either too many alerts or too, many, too few alerts. Uh, it may not catch the exceptions when required, or it may catch too many. So it's a completely new domain. And that's, what, that's why I say monitoring systems are hard. Let's talk a bit about Nagios. For Nagios developers, you already know, but uh, Nagios is a monitoring system, IT infrastructure monitoring system, and kind of a st standard tool for monitoring servers, routers, devices in many, many, many companies. The problem with Nagios is that it is, from the development perspective, perspective it is dead. People have uh, forked Nagios and created multiple projects out of it. There's a kind of love-hate relationship over here. People love to hate Nagios, but they still use Nagios because it is everywhere. Let's talk a bit about Shinken. Now, what is Shinken? Shinken was originally proposed as Nagios 4 by Gene Gibbs, its author, but it was rejected by the Nagios developers, uh, and so it became an independent project. So what's the good news for Nagios developers? Shinken supports everything, whatever Nagios supports by default. You can just take your Nagios configuration and use it in Shinken, done. It supports 99% of the configuration as it is. The 1% it doesn't support is written in their documentation, why it doesn't support. Basically, those are very rarely used modules or the features. But again, if you want to have those, you can have it with the help of modules. I've used Shinken 1, 1.0, and uh, uh, Shinken, with Shinken 2.2, I, I saw dramatic changes in the, in the features it provides. It has a new installer itself. It has a lot of new modules, 
Shinken is completely written in Python. So uh, for installation, is really simple. You can do just pip install Shinken and it's done. But by default, it doesn't even provide you a UI. A bit surprising, right? So you have to it install each and every module yourself by using the Shinken installer command. Shinken install web UI, you have a web UI installed. Shinken install something else, you have something else installed. So you don't have to pay the overhead of features you don't want to use. Let's talk a bit about architecture. We, I was talking about uh, it is very modular in design. It is also built for cloud. So Shinken is essentially a bunch of components, or you can say different processes. This Shinken Arbiter, this Shinken Reactioner, Scheduler, Polar, and everything. Uh, by the way, let me talk a bit about the architecture. How does monitoring work? Say you have a, you want to know the load of your system. How will you do that? Anyone? So basically, you, uh, say you want to check the load of a remote server. You can do SSH into the system, run the uptime command, and you have the load, right? So uh, Shinken, Nagios, and many monitoring, many other monitoring systems do this polling approach. They poll the remote servers for the health status, and you and display it in the UI, have a alerting mechanism and everything, right? So Shinken also does that. Uh, the the component which you can see in the green at the bottom, the Shinken Polar, actually polls the system at regular intervals. Scheduler is the one who's who instructs Polar to perform the check whenever required. It will schedule it every time. Reactioner is, is the component which will send you notifications, alerts, uh, events, if you want to handle something on its own. Uh, Arbitrar is a centralized place where you keep all your configuration and every, and it will configure all other components for you. You don't have to configure each and every component. Broker is something which is aware of what is happening in all the system and it can provide tools on top of it. This receiver is an optional component for uh, having passive checks, more of a push-based approach. Again, when I say it is built for cloud, each of these modules, each of these components are independently scalable. You may have five arbitrators, 10 polars, 11 schedulers, all as per your design, all as per your requirements. Let's talk about a bit about Docker Shinken. So Docker Shinken is a project, basically, uh, what we did was Dockerize Shinken and have uh, some of the must-have plugins, modules, pre-installed over here. We have three varieties of uh, Docker Shinken. One is Shinken Basic. Uh, Shinken plus truck, Shinken, truck, and graphite. Right, so basically, Shinken Basic is just providing you the basic uh, UI, a Shinken web UI, and few must have plugins. Truck will provide you another UI. Uh, again, a, a good news for Nagios developers who, Truck UI is an independently developed project, and it, its uh, UI is very similar to Nagios. So you will still feel at home. And Graphite is, again, providing one more tool for, for the graph support. Let's do a quick uh, check. How does it work? So as I said, uh, monitoring systems are hard. So this project aims at simplifying the uh, or decreasing the learning curve. You just have to run these three commands, and you are, you are up and running with the monitoring system. Let's do it right now. The first command is just to clone a Docker, uh, Docker repository, Docker Shinken repository. And uh, I've already done that. Okay. The second is to CD to a particular directory. Again, let's first check what all possible directories are there. Shinken basic, truck, and graphite. So depending on the image you choose, you can you can uh, you can cd to the respective directory so let me just do that i am going to choose the third one and the third just run the docker command bingo my shinken should be up and running 
let us check, let us check, yeah. So, the resolution is a bit uh, small, so you cannot see everything, but I can do minimize, yeah. So, the by default, uh, the uh, username and password is admin and admin, which is configurable. You can log in over here and see the different uh, monitorings in place, monitoring checks in place. So, I have pre configured it with uh, monitoring Docker Shinken, the Docker container itself. So, you can see a lot of different uh, checks. I can click on any one of them. So, it gives me a status message. It also has graph support. I have just launched the a Docker container, so it doesn't have any graphs. There's also another UI, so I can just type "truck" and over here I get a uh, uh, login. That's it. This is very similar to what the Nagios default UI provides. So I can click on all the service. I can see the different services, what are, what is the status and everything. Uh, yeah, for, for you to experiment, I have al already set up uh, a demo for you. You can just log in and uh, play with it if you like. Over here, I have not told about told you about uh, one thing. Custom configs. So, this is a, uh, a custom configs directory is mounted on the Docker container using the volume mounting feature from the Docker itself, right? So, I have just uh, created different folders, different hierarchy uh, to to make it more understandable. So, all you have to do is just uh, place your configuration file over here whenever you want to make any change. If you want to monitor your host, you can just add your, con add your Nagios configuration or Shinken configuration over here and you, have, you are good to monitor another system. Now, let us check uh, what it is required to monitor another system. Uh, Till now, I was talking about uh, Shinken, which is a Nagios core replacement, right? Now, let us talk a, a bit about the client side. You want to monitor, say, 20 different hosts or 100 different hosts. You will be running, you will be running an agent on those hosts. It is nothing new in, uh, this is nothing about Shinken, this is uh, this is this was there from before. NRP stands for Nagios Remote Plugin Executor. So you can install this uh, uh, agent on your system, and Shinken can pull this agent for health information. NRP is not the only way to perform health checks. You can do health checks via SSH, uh, SNMP, and others. But uh, this is the NRP is most commonly used for monitoring, and I'll be talking a bit about this. So, what is required for, what do you want to monitor? So, generally speaking, like you would like to monitor system metrics. There are basically three, three broad categories in which you can classify monitoring of servers or clients. One is uh, system metrics, second is process and, uh, and, uh, processes and applications. And third one is application metrics. So, for example, you have system load, memory utilization, the space, and all of these you want to keep track. And these, all of these, will come under applic uh, system metrics. Second is the processes you have installed. Say, for example, you may have installed Elasticsearch, you may have installed uh, Kibana, you may have installed X, Y, Z. So, you want to monitor those processes whether they are up and running, what is the memory CPU utilization of those. Those general, general monitoring of your application is, I would say, process monitoring. Third is application metrics. Say you may have a master-slave setup. 
you want you may want to monitor what is the lag a replication lag you may have elastic search setup you may want to monitor the sh different shardings and so on so basically you can classify monitoring into three categories let's look at nrp and and see how does uh, how can we configure a simple monitoring so i can just do a uh, nrp installation using apt or yum pack yum package manager app get install nagios nrp server and i am done this is the default configuration file nrp.cfg if you notice there will be a line at towards the end include nrp local.cfg so i would recommend you to modify this file instead of modifying the original one so let's check i have already installed uh, an nagios nrp server yeah so this is a very descriptive uh, nrp configuration the default one you have different options and everything most of it uh, i think uh, you you will you will not have to touch touch them if you want to change the server port by default it is uh, 5666 uh, from the shinken server or the nagios you connect to the remote server using ip based authentication so there will be something called allowed hosts you can see over here so we can add different uh, ip addresses common separated ip addresses or cidr and different things at the end you can see include nrp local.cfg so whatever is defined is by default you include nrp local and it will be overwritten so what will you uh, what do you want to overwrite most common thing uh, is something you would you will have to validate your shinken server so allowed host you will write uh, i want to i want to allow my shinken host to connect to nrp second is like uh, don't blame nrp don't blame nrp is option for enabling arguments by default it is disabled and uh, it is considered as a security risk so if if you want to enable it you can enable it using the uh, by having the value as 1 and the third thing is the most important that is nrp commands think of it as a key value pair the key being the command and the value being the actual shell command you want to execute now again those uh, commands are called uh, nrp plugins which can be written in any language including python ruby go whatever uh, some a lot of plugins is already available uh, you can install nrp plugins to have a bunch of plugins available with you so these here's a two here are two examples now let's look at the server side shinken before we begin uh, there are three things think of uh, a command you want to execute and then the command will be ex will be executed by services and services will be uh, services are present in a for a particular host right so think of this hierarchy you have commands which can be used by multiple services a service which can be imported by multiple host right so command definition comes in the beginning i have written two command definition which is by default present just for the demo purpose i have written this check nrp and check nrp with optional arguments then you define a host just the host name use generic host that is a shinken template you can define all your common configuration over there by default it has a bunch of common configuration and finally the address service definition service definition is the actual com actual checks you want to perform check dns and load per cpu are the two service definitions i have defined over here again use generic service is a template over there you have a bunch of common common 
uh, attributes defined, like what is the check interval, what are the different uh, uh, people who should be notified if there is an alert and so on. Host name is Shinken, this was defined in my previous, previous definition, host definition. And finally, the check, uh, check NRP, the command name, check NRP and the actual command name I want to execute. And the second one is with arguments. Let us do a quick uh, demo of this. So, as I said, uh, I have just allowed my, uh, I have just added the authentication for different host, including my Docker Shinken. So, I can just do a, so this is the IP of my Docker container. Uh, I am trying to, uh, I am running my Docker container to to monitor my local host itself, the host which is running the Docker. So I'm going to use this local IP. If you are monitoring a remote host with public IP, maybe you will have you will have to write the public IP over here. The, you will have to whitelist the public IP, right? This is something which I have already whitelisted. You can see see it over here. Fine. And there's one more thing. The custom configs directory which I have talked about, you can place your configurations, you can just modify the configuration, you can add and remove your configuration files and Shinken will automatically detect that, Docker Shinken will actually automatically detect that. So I am going to just do that. I have a setup ready, so dev.local, so this is how I am defining my host some services. These, uh, these commands, check users and check load, uh, were, are pre, predefined in the Nagios def, uh, NRP default configuration. So I'm just using those instead of defining my own. And what I'm going to do is just copy dev.local to custom configs directory. That's it. Let's check what's, uh, I'm so, uh, I forgot one thing. Uh, all the all the configuration file for Shinken should be with uh, .cfg extension. So custom configs dev dot local and custom configs dev dot local dot cfg. Right, and I can see refresh over here, and I have yeah, I have dev That's it. So it is done right now. So it, it will take, prob I can probably just uh, force initiate a few checks, select all of these and recheck now. So ping is okay. Check HDA1 is critical because the device does not exist in, in this particular device does not exist and it is showing critical. There are a few other, th other things like uh, the check load and everything. We have it here. Right. So again, uh, for the UI and everything, you can have, you can look at the demo yourself, shinken.roid.io and the project is op available open source in GitHub. So let's talk a, a bit about why, uh, how this project can help. As I said, monitoring systems are hard. Now you have a basic setup ready with uh, graphs and everything with you, right? A uh, lot of uh, plugins is pre pre uh, is already available with you. You can slowly start understanding monitoring systems. The learning curve is not like this, no, it is kind of flat. And gradually build up your uh, understanding on the monitoring domain and start learning how, how to. Yeah, so one experience I would like to share uh, about the transition from Nagios to Shinken. 
So one of the experience I would like to share is the transition of Nagios from uh, transition from Nagios to Shinkin. So at Nullarity, I work at Nullarity. At Nullarity, we were using Nagios. Hello. Yeah. At Nullarity, we were using Nagios, and we had a lot of uh, problems with uh, the way it was deployed and the features it was providing. So we have a inherit, uh, we have a deployment of uh, cloud plus data centers. We have a centralized cloud platform where we ho we have our applications, and we have various data centers which is required as per our business. So some maybe in uh, some data centers in say Delhi, Bangalore, Dubai, and so on. So with uh, Shinken. As I said, it is, it, uh, it is built for cloud and uh, it, supports, it supports uh, distributed architecture. I was able to, I just uh, d did one thing. The Shinken Polis, which actually pulls the re uh, remote systems for health checks, just added one in each of the data centers and I'm done. I, can, I have a really distributed monitoring system. I can monitor each of the host within, the, within a data center using local IPs. But in case of Nagios, it, may, it, it is still possible, but uh, it is not that intuitive. So that was a use case which I uh, wanted to share. And that's it. I think I'm done quite early. I have a lot of time left. I would love to hear your questions. It should trigger some emails or it should trigger s some SMS to the uh, the person which we have uh, configured. I mean, the, the mobile number we have configured or the email uh, we have configured. Do we have any any system? Right. So, uh, Shinken is more of a like a execution engine. You can you can think of like that. It w it is scheduling and and executing whatever you write. You can write whatever you want. So the check which uh, which I've showed you, like, so here's a Shinken command. You can see there's a check NRP. This is not something Shinken specific. It is a, it is a, it is an independent program, and uh, and Shinken is doing a system call, to call this uh, uh, to perform a remote check check in the system, right? Once it uh, receives the value, it will evaluate and have have it in the UI, send notifications or whatever. So like this, there are a lot of uh, community plugins available. For email check, uh, for emails, I've also open sourced one uh, AWS SES based notification plugin. Uh, there are many, uh, for like HipChat, there's a uh, HipSaint plugin, I guess that is the name, which you can use to send hip chat notification for sms you can have something like if you are in if you have used uh, twilio or plevo you can use those or uh, uh, you can r build your own plugin for way to sms in india and so on uh, that said like uh, check nrp is making a system call and this is a very basic command right this is also a module which can help uh, avoid system calls and do the remote network call directly from the Shinken Polar. There's a Boosted and NRP module. So there may be some NRP, mo there may be some Shinken modules which can help you do the same without making a system call as well. Hi, nice Hi. introduction to Shinken. I've been using Nagios from God, more than three, four years. One thing that I'm annoyed uh, with Nagios is the way uh, uh, it keeps uh, graphical information about historical data. Does Shink can do anything better in that area? Yeah, you are talking about uh, anything comparable to Neuralink. So I would talk. Uh, I talked a bit about uh, Swak UI, right? Yeah, Swak UI is an independent project which can be integrated, say, in Nagios or Shinken or a few other monitoring, monitoring systems as well. Swak UI can be integrated with Shinken using Life Status API. Life Status API is faster than status dot 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 dat passing. In Nagios, there's a status dot dat file which is being passed for all the status information. So in that sense, it is faster. 
second uh, you can have uh, uh, you can enable logging in life status api and you can have all your historical information you can you can check the availability status the you can generate all sorts of reports and everything all right i'll give it a try thank you yeah Thank you, Rohit, for the session. So, uh, you know, this is more of an advice from you. I mean, I'm asking for an advice from you. Uh, you know, what would be the basic uh, monitoring requirements for a startup which has a couple of application server and one database server and has only got uh, you know handful of developers and not any DevOps person? So, you know, what would you what would you suggest that be the I mean, what kind of basic monitoring services that we should be using, right? So that is what I have. Right. Uh, that's a beautiful question. I have. Uh, I've also interacted with a few people from really small startups. And when I talk about monitoring, they say, uh, we are not doing it, what it is. So yeah, uh, from the developer point of view, uh, monitoring is something which is often ignored. And really small startups don't do, do, don't do that. When customers start asking for availability, they think, yeah, we have to do it. So this is one reason Docker Shinkin can help uh, reduce the learn learning curve, and you can have your monitoring system. In you can have your in-house monitoring system. A uh, lot of people in startups use some hosted service as well, like uh, Datadog is very popular nowadays. Uh, for application, New Relic is also being used a lot, but it is more from the from the application from application point of view. But some people use it for system as well. I think. Yeah, so I would suggest uh, if you want to have your in-house monitoring system to have better control of what's happening in your infrastructure, you can start with Docker Shinkin, and can, as you as you in, uh, as your requirements grow, as your understanding becomes better, you can probably start uh, building on top of it or having maybe a dedicated setup. All right, I think we are done. Thank you for being an awesome audience. Thank you, Drohit, for such an amazing talk. PyCon India would like to present you with a token of thanks. <laughs>